well, in theory, the Blue Yeti mic is working. Um, I just, I might be an idiot. It might not be functioning properly because it's used, but once again, we're just going to have to see. Hi, I'm Abby, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, One Minute Off. It's been a, a while since I've uh, posted. A lot of um, weird things have happened in the U.S. and the world since I last posted a video on here, but here we are, um, back on the on the tube. It's been like, you know, a lot of really hard news, etc., etc., and um, to add to that, it seems like uh, Jared Leto can't play a villain. I've been, I've been thinking about Jared Leto a lot lately. He's been in the news for his cry latest movies and has uh, really become a frequently revisited point of humor on Twitter whenever he uh, pretty much does or says anything nowadays. I personally mostly have been thinking about that article about him where he was on some trip in the desert when COVID started and said it was like a zombie apocalypse when he got back, which to me just sort of like really shows, explains Jared Leto's whole thing, his whole vibe in the most perfect of ways. I'm not really sure that, you know, like turning off your phone and going off the grid is like the best thing to do when you hear about rapidly rising COVID cases, but hey, celebrities. My first introduction to Mr. Leto was actually through my ears and not my eyes. I'm pretty sure that one of the preloaded songs in the first cell phone I ever got was like a 30 Seconds to Mars song that I, I never listened to. Sorry, Jared. And I didn't know, okay, did you know? Do you know Jared Leto's 50 years old? I did not know that Jared Leto was 50 years old. For context, Joaquin Phoenix is 47. Jared Leto is 50. How? I didn't know this either, but he was pretty much like doing music and movies at pretty much the same time. Like it sort of seems like he was waiting for one or the other to kind of like take off. <laughs> and I mean, I guess one of them did. He's been in the movie scene for like a, a pretty long time now. He's really done yeah, all sorts of different genres, different stuff. And he even won an Academy Award uh, for Best Supporting Actor for his role in Dallas Buyers Club in 2014. But ladies and gentlemen, the question I have on my mind today is, is Jared Leto a good actor. I thought with, you know, everything going on in the US and in the world today, all this, uh, you know, heavy stuff weighing on us, uh, we could get this little, you know, this one little nagging question off our shoulders. This little feeling that I'm sure we've all had in the back of our minds since Morbius came out. Do we really need Jared Leto as an actor or can, can we let, can someone else do it? <laughs> But I thought that we could take the time to kind of go through all of the major movies that Jared Leto has starred in and kind of see, yeah, what's going on there. And to answer that question, I have found a way. I forgot the one thing that I needed for this video. So sorry. All right. Okay. Now to really answer this question, um, I think we're gonna kind of have need some uh, professional means for this, you know, some research, some academic means. I did go to college. I thought the best way to answer this burning question that again we all have in our minds every day is to pretty much <laughs> is to do some research, make a list of all the major movies that Jared Leto has been in. Now, I did pull inspiration from Nick is Not Green for this video, so thank you for that. Go watch Nick is Not Green. <laughs> gonna do here is I've got I've got this little little tally that we're gonna make here. That is gonna be Jared. And this side's gonna be Jared Bad. So I feel like that's a pretty self-explanatory. Now this is not gonna be you know a complete list of all the times that Jared Leto's beautiful face graces the screen. After hours of painstaking research and huge asterisk here because well, I do what I want, I decided to basically take all of the movies where Jared Leto is a, is a main guy or one of the main guys enough to justify talking about the movie. So, I mean, if you're looking for like an in-depth analysis of Angel Face from Fight Club or Paul from American Psycho, I, this is not that. With a few notable exceptions, uh, which I feel deserve to be on this list. This is gonna be a video which mainly focuses on the uh, Jared Leto main character 
filmography, which do not fret is still pretty extensive and interesting. So as we all know, as fact, Rotten Tomatoes is the only way to score movies as no other medium of measurement exists, and the creation of movies and film is not subjective at all. I've decided to put these movies to the test, and by test I mean typing them into the search bar on the Rotten Tomatoes website and seeing what kind of scores they got. Obviously, you know, this is a it's a funny haha -ha video and Rotten Tomatoes is not the only way to judge movies and other YouTubers have made great videos on that. But on the other hand, okay, like this has no basis or no basis in fact, no justification, but if there were ever an actor who should be judged by Rotten Tomatoes, I feel like it should be Jared Leto. He's got this like bland, mustardy, vanilla-y vibe to him, right? And he's like, he's not weird in like a cool way, like uh, like Robert Pattinson. It's just odd, it's like, oh my, he's like the physical manifestation of Rotten Tomatoes. Like if you met Rotten Tomatoes at a party, I feel like it would look, talk and walk like Jared Leto. So we're gonna be pretty lenient, we're gonna be pretty nice to Mr. Jared here, but we're gonna say that if the score is above 50%, it's in, it can go in the good category, and he can keep making movies. Uh, but if it's below 50%... <laughs> On top of his many music and movie credits, he's actually also a very good nar wor words person. He's like narrated a few documentaries, and he actually uh, directed one. So there's that too, but we're not, we are not talking about any of that today. Uh, let's begin this medium deep dive on Jared Leto's acting career. And before we get into this, uh, as always, if you made it this far into the video and you like what you're seeing, thanks for watching and uh, feel free to subscribe for more of me bullying Jared Leto. I feel like this is gonna be fun. So the first movie we're looking at is uh, one that came out in uh, 1996, which is two years before I was born. It's called The Last of the High Kings. According to Rotten Tomatoes, it actually hasn't been released yet, but it, it came out in 1996, so I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, the description reads, In the summer after he finishes high school, Frankie Griffin nervously awaits the results of his college entrance examinations, positive he's failed, while he struggles to get through a long season full of challenges. Over the summer months, he deals with his mother's and father's high expectations, admires two teenage girls from afar, <laughs> plans the perfect party, and fights off unwanted attention from an American tourist. So that's an interesting description for sure. It did get a uh, whopping 59% from the audience, so... Which, I mean, out of 2,500 ratings and being his first feature film is uh, it's not bad. Not bad, Leto. That's one mark in the good category. So, so far he's fine. I feel like I should also mention, too, that this movie is listed as uh, drama and LGBTQ+, so hey. But also, and, and if you like this movie, you will also probably enjoy Ed's next move and a couch in New York. This next movie we're looking at is called Prefontaine. It came out the year after, 1997. This uh, this movie is like pretty bleak. Um, Olympic defeat matures a selfish distance runner, Jared Leno, into a sports activist before his 1975 death in a car crash. I don't know anything about Prefontaine, though I guess I should because I did sports. Um, but it also got a pretty impressive score of 79%. Actually, that's what well, actually went down 1% since I last looked at the page, so now it's 78. But yeah, it doesn't change it. Doesn't change this. However, uh, the disparity between the audience score and the critic score is an interesting one here for sure. Maybe I should kind of start channeling that in as well. I mean, e even the positive reviews are like trying pretty hard here. A lot of them say things like it's still a vigorous, passionate piece of movie making, and it gets to the finish line. All right, I, I mean, hey, so far we're doing, we're doing surprisingly well, Jared. I guess it's not too surprising though. I mean, he, he really kind of did look like, you know, poor man's Johnny Depp in Nightmare on Elm Street, didn't he? <laughs> Next up in the year of my birth, 1998, we have Basil. Basil? Basil? It's a romance movie seemingly set in Victorian England. Basil from like Dorian, Basil from Dorian Gray. A wealthy young man pursues a beautiful woman and ignores the restraints of aristocracy and his overbearing, disapproving father. It's also rated R. And yeah, if you'll remember, I, I did say that I wasn't gonna review anything that didn't have Jared Leto as the main guy. And here, the main guy is technically Christian Slater. But I watched the trailer for this movie and trust me, 
Jared Leto's the main character. Unfortunately though, this does give us our very first negative uh, score tally for the video. With an incredible 46% from the audience and a score of zero from the critic. There were only five reviews for this movie. Four of them are just blank and one of them says this. Next time the actors might ask to see a script first. I might actually have to like sit down and watch this movie because uh, it just, it looks, it sounds so interesting. I'm always, I'm a for Victorian England. Um, for Jared Le All right, three down. This is some, I think this is some pretty good research so far. <laughs> so Jared Leto actually had a pretty big year in 1998 as he also came out with Urban Legend. The epic class, sorry, the, ep the epic classic Urban Legend. Uh, the description says, a university is beset by a rash of gruesome murders that resemble old urban legends. When her friend Michelle is killed by someone hiding in her car, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Natalie begins to notice the pattern. Her suspicions grow stronger when her own roommate is strangled to death. Soon, the quiet college campus is transformed into hunting grounds for a maniac, and Natalie struggles to find the killer and stop the bloodshed, be stop the bloodshed before she becomes the and stop the bloodshed before she becomes the next victim. It's rated R, by the way. So I guess the, the college is just being haunted by urban legends, but it's actually a guy. And J Jared is the one on the case. Now, this movie did get um, a 23% uh, from the audience, and I think, a th yeah, 37. And I mean, that doesn't even out the score, but the reviews are a lot nicer here than they were for Basil. At least they exist, too, which is actually something I can't say for a lot of the other ones, interestingly. Which um, ultimately does lead me to believe that this, is, this won't be a good watch. I mean, I'm always down for like a campy horror, it's so bad it's good type, but... I'm getting, I'm getting a weird vibes from this one. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's like one of the last great movies from this era, but uh, kind of seems like a bad scream knockoff. This comment made me a little mad though, I will say. So Brandon apparently watched this movie recently and he comments, This was a dumb movie with a terrible killer reveal that is just completely illogical. Also, the outfits of the characters were insane. Brandon, it's 1998. It's, it's a movie set in 1998 and it's filmed in college. Of course the outfits are gonna be bad. But you know, like, on top of that, like, I, yeah, have you ever seen a campy horror film? The movie is about urban legends killing college freshmen. Like, the first rule of enjoying campy horror is always to suspend your disbelief. If you spend the whole movie, you know, wondering and worrying about, like, why are people so stupid, you won't have any fun, trust me. Enjoy life, touch grass, just go with the fact that the dumb teens are leaving their phones at home. There wouldn't be a movie if they didn't, bro. Where were we? Oh no. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream came out in 2000. 2000 and was um, a pretty much nothing like his previous two features. This one I really don't have jokes about since I haven't seen it and it's a pretty universally loved movie. Jared Leto does play the son in this movie and no he's not the main guy but again I do what I want. It's like pretty notorious, pretty famous for being a lot to stomach visually and it wound up with a 79% from critics and an 89% from audience reviews so... Is this Jared Leto's peak? We'll have to continue and see. Out in the same year as Requiem for a Dream was Sunset Strip, which uh, takes place in a year when groups such as the Eagles, Steely Dan, and Bruce Springsteen made their album debuts. Oh boy. So I, I guess this is like a, like a mockumentary of sorts, sort of a deep dive satirical look. Uh, into the lives of musicians, the lives of a few rockers, and all in that scene during the early 70s. Cool. <laughs> Jared Leto plays this like up and coming country rocker here depicted as, I guess, Axl Rose. And the movie is about uh, five of these ragtag guys and gals who are just trying, who are just trying to make it in the music industry. And it got, I guess, I guess not enough reviews for an actual critic score but it did get a 48 percent from the audience so uh so close jared but so far away this is heating up look at this tie and we're only about halfway through too you know sometimes i am just fully grabbed by the description of a movie and this is one of those movies two friends hit the road for seattle to attend a vigil for singer kurt cobain and escape the wrath of an angry mobster 
count me in. So so Highway came out in theaters in 2001, but didn't come out on streaming until 2008, which like, isn't that, is that weird? That's weird, right? I feel like it seems like, you know, more popular films went to DVD or streaming or whatever more quickly than the less popular ones. But I mean, seven years? When did DVDs come out? 1997, yeah, there's no excuse. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is also in it, Selma Blair, uh, Dr. Cox from Scrubs. It's a pretty stacked cast, and it honestly only seems appropriate that it ended up with a with a 69% from the audience. Now again, on the critic side, I guess there's just not enough information. We're gonna be nice, and we're gonna give this one to them. So the next movie that we're going to be looking at came out in 2002 and also stars Kristen Stewart and Jodie Foster and it's called Panic Room. <laughs> yeah, he's not the main guy here again, but Kristen Stewart? I'm not gonna not include that movie. Jared Leto, he just plays one of the bad guys. He plays one of the burglars who breaks into the women's home, locks those people into, you know, the titular Panic Room. I mean, 76% from uh, the critics and 64% from the audience, so that's great, Jared. Look at that. Feels kind of weird just calling him Jared. I mean, it's also David Fincher, so it's probably gonna be pretty good anyway. Maybe I'll watch this one too. Overall, it seems to be accepted as, at best, as like a solid Fincher film, and at worst, like a, a really bad cookie cutter commercial thriller. So who knows? Another chance for him to keep making movies. What's next? <laughs> So this, apparently at this time, um, Jared Leto was going through like a darker noir kind of phase. One could call it an emo phase even. Uh, in 2006, he started a movie called Lonely Hearts, which is a drama slash crime film uh, along with John Travolta, who as we know makes really good mafia movies. Salma Hayek, uh, Quentin Tarantino's favorite foot model. Leto plays one of the Lonely Hearts killers who prey on war widows. Oh, Laura Dern is also in this. That's nice. This movie, okay. This one, it comes pretty close to hitting the mark, but unfortunately, it does fall flat with a 47% from critics and a 49% from the audience. Even the positive reviews here have like good but not great vibes all around them. In 2007, Jared Leto continued his dark path with a movie called Chapter 27, which is, oh God, a dramatization of the murder of John Lennon. Leto portrays Mark David Chapman himself. I don't really have, I don't have much to say about this one other than like, why, why, why was it made? Lindsay Lohan is in this too, but unfortunately this will give him another notch in the bad category with um, an 18% from critics and a 37% from the audience overall. Oof. Okay. Uh, the next movie we're going to be talking about is Mr. Nobody, and I was under the impression that this was not a good film, but I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I just had it mixed up with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, so forgive me. Can you tell those guys apart? Young white man plays a sad superhero slash supervillain. What else do I need to say? Mr. Nobody came out in 2009 and is um really the start of Jared's switch from, I guess, noir, dark, crime, murder, historical stuff to more, you know, futuristic and bright stuff, but also still with murder. It's, it's one of those, like, you know, future end of humanity, oh, what if I did this with my life instead? Movies, which, uh, I mean, it seems to be pretty well suited for Jared. This actually got 68% and 76% from critics and the audience, respectively, giving him another little notch in the good category. Am I getting Sharpie on the wall? No, thank God. And I guess people loved it visually. <laughs> and I also love this one comment. Never mind that several characters seem to gain or lose British accents throughout the course of the film. The lack of continuity only enhances the sense of deliciously dizzying disequilibrium. <laughs> oh my god. So Jared then took, you know, a little bit of a break over the next few years. Uh, he had like a minor role in the Blade Runner series and, you know, began to inch closer and closer, scarily, towards the superhero universe. <laughs> I can't say anything about this movie that people haven't said before on this here website, so I feel like it's all just kind of better if we collectively forget that this film happens and just remember that uh, there's another one out there that is good. Do I even have to say it? I mean, 26% from critics, 56% from audiences, and um, way too many memes to count.
Now the next film is The Outsider, which came out in 2018 and got some pretty different scores uh, with 17% from critics and 67% from the audience. So for this one, I actually had to, you know, do some more research and um, go over to IMDb for more uh, accuracy in the data and, uh, <laughs> that's more like it. Uh, this movie is about a former American GI who joins the Yakuza, uh, yeah. Apparently it's a little, you know, maybe not flat out racist, but kind of, yeah. Still subtly racist. Seems like, you know, the focus was a little bit too much on Jared Leto being in, in like a weird, different setting. And I guess could have said something interesting, but kind of looks like it didn't. Now I know if I got 67% right, but I, if you, actually if you average together 17 and 67, you get 42. So that average actually comes out to 42%. So unfortunately, I, th uh, I think I'm gonna have to put this one in the bad category. I think I'm gonna trust my own math on this one. We're getting close, we're getting close to the end here, don't worry. The next movie is House of Gucci. Uh, House of Gucci is another one where he's not the main character, but uh, it's, it's a movie that lives rent-free in my head, if I'm honest. Critics would say that it felt like he didn't really take his role very seriously and almost made a parody out of the role to a point where it just like came off as bad. Sound familiar? <laughs> But a lot, oh, a lot of people like this movie for for some reason. It's a bit campy, so I mean, it's, it is kind of right up Jared Leto's alley, and I mean, this will give him another one in the good category. All right. It looks like we're actually tied uh, seven to seven here. So of course, you know, the next movie is gonna be. <laughs> Been on YouTube in the last month. You've heard of this movie already. This one's gonna be difficult because people are memeing on it so much that it's actually like affecting the Rotten Tomato reviews. It's so much so that it's gonna like be hard to parse out actual criticisms. <laughs> it got 17% from critics, but it got, <laughs> but it also got a 71% from audiences. One of the most compelling and conflicted characters in Sony Pictures' universe of Marvel characters comes to the big screen as Oscar winner Jared Leto transforms into the anime, oh my god. Which, unfortunately, will give it an average uh, failing grade of 44%. Uh-oh. I mean, yeah, the general consensus with this one is that it would have been a really popular movie had it come out 10 or 20 years ago. But it is not good. It's bad. So that's pretty much the list that I came up with. Let's take a look here. Thank god I chose an uneven number of movies, I didn't even think about that until now, but it, unfortunately it does it does look like um, we're gonna have to uh, ban Jared Leto from acting now. As it was close, it was really close, but it kind of seems that uh, Jared, Jared's done. Maybe what we can conclude, you know, from this uh, research project is that Jared Leto was able to act at one point in his life. For sure. And he did it He did it very well. He's been in some really serious movies about really serious topics that have gone over very well. But he... But he also played a, a vampire villain man. So I mean, what, what, what should we do with him now? You know what I mean? The evidence seems to point to letting someone else try. In my humble opinion, maybe, you know, maybe the guy just needs like a few more years off in the desert or something. Or, you know, wherever he goes, so then he can come back and give us just something completely different. <laughs> just a few more years, Jared. I, I know I know it's in there. I do hope he is not roped into like Morbius contracts for the next year because uh, I do I think he should avoid <laughs> the DC Marvel universes uh, as much as possible and focus on, I don't know, maybe his documentary narration for the time being. But yeah, I do hope that you enjoyed this uh, <laughs> deep dive into Jared Leto's career. Uh, if you made it this far, uh, what do you think? Do you think I was being too harsh on the man? Uh, do you think I was not being harsh enough? I think the research really speaks for itself, but I would really like to hear what you guys think. Do we put Jared Leto in movie jail for now and let another bearded white man give it a shot? Should we make him start doing commercials? Does he already do commercials? Do you still have faith in him to make uh, good movies? He did win an Academy Award, so maybe he's just best in a supporting role? I don't know. Anyways, I hope you did uh, enjoy this uh, Jared Leto jaunt. If you did, feel free to subscribe. Uh, you can also find me here on TikTok and Instagram. And that's gonna be it.
Uh, I'm Abby. Uh, this is One Minute Off. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I am going to go get some donuts and uh, play some checkers. Bye.